the long introduction. This might sound like we're going to be herding cats for a second. It might sound a little crazy, but I want you just to try in, like unmute yourself and just say hello to one person that you see on here today. So go ahead if you can, unmute yourself. Even if we don't see you, that's fine. But I want you just to say hi to someone and just shock them. Like they might not even know that you can see them, but just say hi to someone. Hi, George. Hi, Lena. Hi, Joe. Hi, Lisa. Hello, Justin. Hi, Jorge. Hey. Hello, Olivia. Hey, Becky. Hi, hey. Mindy. Hey, Crystal. Hey, Melissa. Hey, Joe. Hey, Trish. Hey, Elena. Hi, Dr. Jeanette. Hi, Colleen. Hi, Melissa. Hey, Dominique. Hey, Jasmine. Awesome. I think we, hey, Mindy. Hey, Cindy. <laughs> hey, Andrea. <laughs> Hey, Crystal. <laughs> hey, hey, I love you. <laughs> hey, Melissa. Woo -hoo. Hey, Melissa. Hey, Yvonne. All right. I think, oh, hey, Rhonda. Yeah. Um, hope you said everybody got a hello this morning. I think we'll go ahead and uh, start with um, our sharing of our PowerPoint. Cindy, did you want to share that? I'm getting, uh, there we go. All right, beautiful. All right, so you're here. It's our November Parent Advisory Council meeting. Um, it's Friday. We made it. <laughs> if I um, speak at the same time, do I interrupt you? Chris? No, uh, we have any, let's let Melissa do her. Good, good morning. Um, so I'm going to interrupt you real quick, um, Crystal, um, just to say that it is so important that we provide everyone's heart language for these groups. Um, and your heart language is the language a person learns from birth and what they speak at home. And so for most of us, that's English, um, but for others that are um, a part of our JCPS community, it's a different language and we want to respect that. So to, we have an interpreter here today, um, Jorge. So if you would like to listen to this presentation in Spanish, you have an icon at either the bottom or the top of your um, Zoom screen that says interpretation and it looks like a little globe. So you'll click on that and just um, press Spanish or I don't see it. I don't see it. I haven't started it yet, Jorge. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm going to make this spill and then start as soon as I'm done. So that's um, how you that's how you jump on um, to listen in Spanish. And if you could just repeat that, please, Jorge, and then I will start the translation. Okay. But I don't see any globe. You know, um, I, I, it's because I haven't started it yet because as soon as I start it, then we won't be able to hear you. So I okay. want the group to, gotcha. be able to hear you in Spanish first. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so if you'll, in Spanish, just mention um, that we're offering this presentation in Spanish and how to get there. All right. Good, the globe has popped up. So if you're on here, you should see the globe down there. If you would like Spanish interpretation, your heart language, I love it that way. Um, you can go ahead and click on the globe and you should be able to get interpretation. Awesome, thank you, Melissa. And thank you, Jorge. All right, so like just real quick, since we're here together, um, if you are, just we're muting ourselves um, in case our you know kids or our dogs go crazy in the background. So if you mute yourself, but we do want you to speak, definitely to feel free to share. Um, the um, the meeting is being recorded, so we're going to get some great information today. So I want you to make sure that if there's something you feel like you didn't write it down in time, you didn't get all of it, just know that we'll have a recorded version. Interpretation is provided. Uh, we appreciate Jorge uh, as our interpreter. And you can use the chat for questions, comments, putting resources in there, all the good stuff. And we are obviously here with a positive intent. I mean, that's always been our parent advisory council. And if this is your first time joining us, welcome. If this is your a million time joining us, welcome. We're so happy to have everyone. And today we, you know, may be uncomfortable, we may be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Every time we come together, what we hope is that things get brought up in your brain that maybe you wanna help or change or do more of. 
And we know that in this meeting that we have together, we may not be able to solve all the problems in the world, but we want us to be okay with that. Be, uh, be comfortable with the uncomfortableness of you're not gonna solve everything today. Or we might have conversations that make us reflect. And so this agenda, I want us to just be present today. So even if you are, you know, your screen is off and you're kind of um, having to like balance a lot of different things, I'm still hoping that we can be present today. And I want you to just come with an intention of like, what do you want? What's one thing on here that you can get today? So there's two things I want you to focus on. At least one thing, we're gonna go back to the agenda. At least one thing um, that you can take away and at least that you can use for yourself and then one thing that you can share. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what is PAC for anyone that's new. Um, we're gonna give some introductions of our, our face team and we're gonna do a little time where we get to know each other. We're gonna talk about the Evolve 502 Scholarship, which is awesome. We're gonna talk about uh, Work Ready Scholarship, which was added on there. We have report card information and um, we also need some information about how to get involved next week to give some feedback. So we have a lot of stuff we're gonna talk about today. So of all those things, think about what is the thing that you're like, okay, I really need to get that. And what's the thing that you're gonna wanna share? So just be thinking about it, be thinking about it. All right, so what is PAC? If you're new on here, anyone on here, first time coming to PAC, if you wanna drop in the chat, is anyone's first time here today? So if it is your first time or if it's not your first time, just as a reminder of why we exist, we really exist to build community. And we know that we don't always have space to build a community of um, family members, of community members. We're not always able to come together. So we really come together so that all of our voices are heard. We can talk about things that matter to us. Um, we also want to make sure we get really important information. So for me, this group is very important to open the door so that we're not hoarding information within our district. We don't keep information, but we share it with you. And my, my intention is that you don't, you're not stingy. No one is stingy. Everyone shares this information with someone you care about, someone in your family, someone in your community. Um, Elena, welcome, it's your first time. So happy to have you here. Um, so I wanna first, I want to also just take away stress of feeling like, okay, I'm part of this parent advisory council. What am I supposed to do? So it's that simple. We come together, we get really important information, give your feedback on some things, and we share it with whoever we can. It's that simple. It can, you can share it as wide or as small as you feel comfortable. So no stress but we're so happy to have you here today. And we also are happy to have um, some of our face support. I'm going to have our face team, some of our members introduce themselves to you because here's what's amazing. When we come to um, Parent Advisory Council, we're not, when we talk about JCPS, I want you to know that there are some people in JCPS that are literally focused on supporting families. And sometimes we just don't even know um, <laughs> that they exist. So I'm going to let some people that we have on our call today introduce themselves as part of FACE. And what does FACE mean? It's our basically our family and community engagement team. I say that right? Yeah, family and community <laughs> engagement team. So our goal is to share resources to help families. That's literally what we do. So first, I think we have Justin on here. Justin, if you want to introduce yourself as part of FACE. Yeah, thank you, Crystal. Uh, my name is Justin Willis, and I've uh, missed the uh, last couple of meetings, and I hate that, but I'm happy to be here now. Um, so I work at the Clothing Assistance Program, which is located in the Russell neighborhood, and we serve schools all over the district with essential items. So uh, we work closely with Family Resource and Youth Services Center coordinators, and they contact us when they realize that a family is living in a car, that a family is living in a shelter and had all their clothing stolen from them, uh, that their kids have grown and they can't afford coats and need coats. So they contact us, and we have a, a large warehouse behind me and a large clothing room 
and we're able to solicit all kinds of wonderful corporate donations and donations in general. And we provide all kinds of great things to these families that desperately need it. Awesome. And so um, Justin is on the call today. If you want to message Justin individually because you want information about you know, how to get support or if you want information that you want to share with someone that you know, Justin will be on the call. So if you want to message Justin directly or if you want to put something in the chat, Justin is here with us to support you with that. So thank you for being here, Justin. Yeah, nice to be here. So, thank you. Yes, thank you. So we also have Trisha Gallagher um, here with us with ECE, and she also brings uh, one of her partners in her um, team. I'm going to let Trisha, you want to introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, I'm Trish Gallagher, and I am the manager of due process for Exceptional Child Education, which is um, special education. Um, we have been very fortunate that um, our chief has invested in making sure that we meet families' needs. It's one of our indicators for special education regulation, but also it's just so important um, because our parents are our partners in developing programs for students. Um, so, and then one of my one of my interests is social network as really is looking at social capital. And when we share resources, we increase the social capital of our families and our different departments. So that's been such a blessing to me that I've been able to collaborate with other departments. Um, I have to leave the meeting to go back to another meeting, but Lisa Batchelor, one of our parent liaisons is here. And she is a wonderful wealth of knowledge, but also, we both need to know what you need from us in terms of special education, because we are charged with implementing special education during NTI. Um, and we know that we're going to, to have to look at how do we make up for the impact of NTI on our students' <clears throat> services. So that's something that we are moving forward towards. And that's actually the meeting that I'm leading, leaving for is to help guide those questions on compensatory ed for our students with IEPs. So please reach out to us. And if you have any questions, please um, let Lisa know during this meeting and we will answer those. Um, and I'll let Lisa tell you a little bit about herself. Hey, I'm Lisa Batchelor. I am the parent, parent liaison for exceptional child education. <clears throat> I have, um, I have children with disabilities, so I know what our families are going through, and um, sometimes that that helps to connect with our families. But I'm here for any um, parent that has a child with an IEP. Thank you so much, Lisa, and uh, Trish. I think may have may have hopped off, but thank you so much for being here, Lisa. And if again, if anybody just has any questions about the ECE process or any questions. Feel free to message Lisa while she's here. Um, Lisa will be happy to follow up with you if there's you know, any other support that you need. We do know that within NTI, that's been some of the main questions we've received is, you know, what do we do if our student you know, um, is receiving ECE services? Um, so thank you, Lisa, for being here. In addition to that, if you know a family that has a student with that receives ECE support and they're having a rough time, please share Lisa's information or Trish, her information with those families um, to help them. So thanks for being here. We also have uh, Krista Drescher Burke, who is with um, Burke, why do I wanna say Birch, <laughs> Burke? Um, she's with um, Diversity, Equity and Poverty. So I know a lot of people have wanted equity information, information about equity. So I'm gonna let uh, Krista introduce herself Hey everybody, uh, it's good to see so many people here. Um, it seems like I've had emails with Lisa Batchelor and I've never seen your face. So that's nice to know. <laughs> um, so I'm in DEP, as Crystal said, I work with uh, a lot of external agencies, out of school time programs. Um, and I do a lot of the um, metrics and things with the racial equity plan. So, um, that's largely what I do, but I can help with any questions you will have with um, school 
theta really any kind of related things like that so <clears throat> and my email is actually that's misspelled it's just like my name with an a at the end there's no e in it i thought that was the case i'm going to change it real quick so thank you krista and um you know chris is very like modest she does she does a wonderful job working with our community partners so do we have any community partners represented on here? Um, whoop, whoop. So Krista has really, you know, helped us a lot with connecting community partners to family engagement work because we're changing the whole idea that family doesn't mean just the typical mother, father, guardian. It means aunt, uncle. It means community uh, provider. It means uh, the neighbor, you know, neighborhood aunt <laughs> who you're really not uh, really um, related to, but you just call her aunt. <laughs> um, so Carissa does a really great job of supporting our community partners and trying to make those connections to school. So we're working on that right now, just how to streamline that those conversations between the community and schools, because we know that right now community, some community partners are serving as family members supporting NTI. So thank you, Krista, for being here. So if you have any questions about like a community organization or if your community organization and you need some support, feel free to message Krista while she's on here today. All right, so this is our FACE team. I gave a lot of different names, uh, but um, who's most important in addition to our FACE team are you. So we wanna give you a second to just introduce yourself. Um, chat a little bit. Uh, we're going to do a, a quick breakout room. It is, I don't see the time, but how long we have. We have about, I think maybe about five minutes or so. And so really what we're going to do is when you are in your breakout room, introduce yourself, um, talk about maybe where your school, what kid your school is at, and just maybe share one thing that you want to volunteer your time or your talents to help in your school or community. And when we come back together, we want you to think about what were some similarities you heard uh, amongst people that you shared. So, all right, let's get to it. So we're gonna do breakout rooms and um, you're gonna see a little thing where you can join a breakout room. <laughs> all right, well, we're coming back. Um, I love chatting. I think I probably could have talked longer. <laughs> if you noticed any similarities, as you were um, talking in your group, let me know. Um, I do want to share just a shout out and just an appreciation for us just being able to check in with each other. I think a similarity I noticed in our group was really just, we're all just trying to do the best that we can in NTI. Um, we have kids that are in so many different areas. Um, and we're all just trying to juggle and do the best we can supporting our kids. So my, my thing that I want to share is wherever you are, wherever you are on any given week, on any given day, you're doing amazing. You are awesome. And you're doing amazing. Like no one ever tell people don't tell us that enough. So you're doing awesome. So thanks again for, uh, breaking out into the groups. Again, if you want to put in your group, something that you all talked about in the chat, um, or any similarities, feel free to put it in the chat. All right, we are so excited to have um, a wonderful resource with us today and some great information with us today. Um, and I want to, we're going to turn it over to Olivia Gerald, but I want to explain first what we have. So I don't know if you all knew or not, but there is an exciting announcement that all of our students are basically JCPS students are going to be eligible for a certain scholarship. And so um, not only do we want to talk about the scholarship, but we want to talk about how is it that how can we make sure that every single student and family A knows about it? And then how can we um, make sure that everyone knows how to accept, you know, that it's accessible. So Olivia is gonna be giving you some information, but she's also gonna be asking you some questions. So I just hope that you give your feedback. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Olivia. Thank you, Crystal. Sorry, I was struggling to get my mute off. 
I am going to share my screen with everybody. I'm going to start with the presentation and then we'll jump um, into our website a little bit too, just so I can show you all what some of this looks like. Um, so uh, for those of you who have not heard about Evolve 502 scholarship yet, um, I'll just give you a basic rundown of, of what it entails. Um, so for every JCPS graduate starting with the class of 2021, and we're hoping to continue that on for additional classes, we're working on that funding, um, we guarantee them a two year um, free post-secondary education at either a KCTCS school or at Simmons College. Um, the way that this works is that it's a last dollar scholarship, um, which means after a student has completed their FAFSA and they've received federal and state free aid, so nothing that they have to pay back, only free aid, our scholarship would cover any difference required for them to be able to attend, um, like I said, either a KCTCS school or Simmons College for free to get that two-year degree or a technical degree as well. Um, and that would include any additional uh, fees too. So anything that would be a barrier to attendance um, that would be on their student bill. Um, so like I said, that would be an associate's degree or a, a workforce credential of some sort. So if, if we have students looking more in the technical fields, um, it will cover those through KCTCS as well. Um, they have a large variety of um, technical programs and also um, possibly, oops, sorry, I did not mean to click to the next page. I meant to minimize myself so I wasn't staring at myself. Um, the possibility of transferring for a four-year degree once they've completed those two years um, at either of those two institutions. Um, as I mentioned briefly, uh, our current partners where this scholarship is, is, is being used is at any KCTCS school. Um, so not just Jefferson Community and Technical College. Um, it could be at Elizabethtown, it could be a Bluegrass in Lexington. Um, you could go all the way to Western or Eastern Kentucky to go to a program at one of those KCTCS schools um, or at Simmons College. Uh, we, we partner with the institutions as well as other outside organizations to offer um, additional supports to make sure that they persist not only to high school graduation so that they're eligible, but also through those two years to make sure that students are successful um, in completing that two year degree. Um, and for those students who are our lowest income students, we realize sometimes they are completely Pell Grant eligible, which if you're attending um, any of the KCTCS schools would not only cover all of your tuition and fees, but you would get a little bit of money back in the end, which means that this scholarship really wouldn't support those students. Um, those students are eligible for an additional um, funding, which is called our opportunity grant. Um, that's a thousand dollars a semester, so two thousand dollars a year that our students can use to cover other um, expenses, anything from transportation or gas money, um, housing expenses, child care, if that's a concern for a student, um, they're going to get that money just like they would in a residual check from their institution to cover um, any expenses that they need. And that's any student that's in a household with $40,000 or less a year. Um, and then we also they would be eligible at the end of that um, to transfer to the University of Louisville for the two plus two program that University of Louisville rolled out earlier this fall, right after we rolled out our scholarship. Um, that would mean that they would be eligible for an additional two years to complete a four year degree at the University of Louisville tuition free. Um, they must be Pell Grant eligible and they must have been an opportunity grant recipient through Evolve 502. Um, and they could come from either KCTS or Simmons to do that. So how are they eligible for the scholarship in general? So starting with 2021 graduates, as I mentioned before, um, they have to have gone to JCPS since ninth grade and graduate from a JCPS high school. Um, there may be some leniency on that. We have an appeal process that we will be rolling out 
Um, you can find that on our website. Um, or also they could have earned a GED within 12 months of their graduation date. So if a student was supposed to graduate in 2021 and they complete um, a GED by 2022, um, they would still be eligible. Or if they've enrolled in the military right after graduation and are going into active duty, they can defer that scholarship until they've returned. Um, you can see any additional requirements um, on our website, which I'm going to pull up in just a minute when we talk about um, when we talk about applications. Sorry, my words this morning. <laughs> it's Friday, um, and I talked a little bit about the opportunity grant already. Um, so it's basically the same eligibility, but in addition, they have to have been a student that was in that forty thousand dollars or less income per household um, to be eligible for that. And then how do they maintain their eligibility? So they have to obviously graduate from high school um, and get into one of the institutions that's participating. Um, they have to complete, not only complete their FAFSA, but they have to be eligible for financial aid, for federal financial aid. Um, and then once they've gotten into their institution, they have to take at least nine credit hours a semester and complete them successfully and maintain satisfactory academic progress, which at all institutions, I believe, or at least at KCTCS and at Simmons, it's a 2.0 or higher. Um, and they get a semester of leniency where they go on probation before they're totally removed from um, like being out of SAP compliance. Um, limitations. So students are not able to take more than six credit hours, which is usually two classes of developmental or remedial coursework. So anything that's not for credit to get them caught up. Um, and they have up to six semesters of eligibility or 60 credit hours or completion of that associate's degree. So it could be any of those that happens first. So if they take less than full-time classes, they can get funding for more than just the two years um, until they get to either a degree or the 60 credit hour cap. So to apply, I'm gonna pull up our, our website in just a second. It's very, very simple. This is probably the most simple scholarship application you will ever see in your life. <laughs> um, they just visit our website and I'll pull that up. Like I said, do the FAFSA, graduate high school, um, enroll at any of our eligible institutions. Um, and I am hoping that all of these things, except for applying for our scholarship are things that the students are doing anyway, if they're planning on attending school college because it's required for basically all of them. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up our website. It's just evolve502.org. Um, and you can find information about our program here, but the page that um, most students are going to want to visit is this scholarship tab at the top. Um, and this gives you just a little basic rundown of information about the scholarship, how much it could be worth. Also, how much the opportunity grant can be worth and who's eligible for that. Um, again, please review eligibility to make sure students are eligible. And then I will click here so you can see what the application looks like. As I mentioned, this is probably the most basic application you'll ever see. <laughs> um, this is the entire application. That's it. Um, so we'll get students um, personal information, how to contact them, their name, um, and then where they go to school when they graduate and any of the schools they plan to apply to. So they do not have to commit to going to this school. If they check it off, they could check every single one on this list if they wanted to. Um, and then click submit and they will be contacted within, the goal is always 48 hours, within 48 hours um, by um, an Evolve 502 student success coordinator to, to let them know that their application was received and if there are any next steps for them. And then that same person will stay in contact with them along the way to, to track their progress. Um, okay, so just like I said, this is basically everything. Our deadline is the 30th of June. So it's a very long scholarship application window. Um, so students have quite a while. Um, it, there's no harm in applying for it and then deciding you don't want it. So the sooner the better, it's a nice little thing to check off your list early. Um, and 
Oh, before I ask my questions, I just want to mention um, we opened on October 1st, the same day that the FAFSA opened. Um, that's one thing that I always like to stress as um, a college support person is please, please have your students fill out the FAFSA as soon as possible. Um, it opened on October 1st and um, you will need tax information, although you don't have to have a physical copy, you can pull it in online as long as you have your address and name that you submitted your taxes under. Um, you can just pull it in from the tax website. Okay, um, so I do have a couple of questions for you all. Um, as we're doing this outreach and trying to make sure that families and students know about our scholarship and our support services that we can help you with college access, um, what are some places that are best for us to find you? Where are you already spending your time in the community outside of finding your students at their school? Where can we find you? And what kind of things do you guys need help with um, when it comes to college planning? And you can put that in the chat if you want. I'm going to open the chat so that we can all see. Oops, I didn't mean to. Sorry, guys. Yeah, so if you, I mean, feel free to unmute yourself, <clears throat> just give your feedback uh, right here, because we really, really want your feedback. And that's what our Parent Advisory Council is for, is to give feedback. You may feel like I'm okay as a parent, but I do know, you think about your cousins, your your neighborhood, you know, family members or whoever, but just, you know, what are the ways to reach everyone? Because here's the thing about this scholarship. This scholarship is not if you're making straight A's. This scholarship is not if you um, have the best attendance. This scholarship is for every student. Mm -hmm. So one thing is I want to really, you know, want students to know that like, don't be afraid to apply for this. Sometimes students feel like college is not for them for whatever reason. So what are, what do you all think are the best places to reach students? And we know, you know, that COVID is making it difficult. I've heard church a lot. I also know there are five million churches in this town, um, so it's 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 a big challenge for us to figure out which ones would give us the most bang for our buck. Um, so, if you all have recommendations on that, that would be really awesome. Family Health Center is a great suggestion, Colleen. I don't think that's on my list from the other day either. Uh, excuse me. I don't know how to right I, no absolutely please just talk that's great uh what if you form a i know uh your seniors have like a uh student body or they represent the student body what if that committee uh or you have a committee uh that has this information has maybe some training on it and they can help the counselor in the schools and uh uh, uh to pass the word along to educate uh some of these seniors on the program uh maybe even start when they're a sophomore or junior I mean, uh, uh, these students will listen to other students more yeah. than maybe you and I sometimes. Uh, but uh, that's a one. That's one way to get the word to them. That's a really great um, suggestion, um, Joe. And honestly, we are really trying to do some outreach and gather a student committee of some sort where we have representatives from all of the high schools. Um, so if you all know of students that would be interested in that, um, please give them our contact information. Um, we would really love to have, like I said, students from every school so that we were getting input from, from every community. There's some good feedback coming in. I see um, community sports complexes, um, they are like second homes. Um, I saw on here Bates. It looks like, um, did you want to talk about that, Dr. Jeanette? Um, I know Dr. Jeanette mentioned that Bates um, uh, oh. Memorial Baptist Church, they're doing some virtual youth meetings. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I had to unmute myself. <laughs> but, <laughs> but base, we have mentor programs that we do with the youth middle and high school. And currently they meeting with them virtual as opposed to in person because of COVID. I think that's a good way to get the information out. Also, Bates have a community center where they work with people, you know, adults and youth in the community. And that's another good way to get this information out to everyone. So not just the youth, but to parents as well. Yep. You can reach out to other family and friends and tell them about it. Absolutely. And I saw a little Metro Housing Authority, public housing locations, absolutely. Um, orientation packets for freshmen, awesome. And if anyone is working, some of us are working with school teams. So you may be working with your school teams to work on like how we're engaging families. That may be something that you might talk to your school team about, but that's definitely some a, a good feedback to make sure that it's in freshman orientation packets or in uh, something like that. Definitely. So are there any topics pertaining to college planning that you think, and it may, again, we're not necessarily just thinking about us. I, I saw some people put uh, FAFSA in there, but is there any, uh, are there any other topics that you think families are gonna need um, support with? So when we're talking about college planning, I think about, and I share that I do, I think that um, some kids just, again, don't think that college is for them. Mm -hmm. or maybe they feel like, you know, I've given up at this point. Um, I'm not sure if this is something I even want to pursue. How do we, you know, what are, is this something that you all see or are there other things that you would think that you think might keep kids from even thinking about applying or they might need support with something else to even get them to this point? What I like most about this program, this scholarship, the student don't have to go to a four year college understanding that they can go to a technical college, I think this is gonna be beneficial because college isn't for everyone. But if someone say, I, I still wanna be a nurse or I wanna do this, so I'll do that. You can go into a two year and do something may be easier, which may be easier. Before I even got my doctorate, I had to take baby steps. I had to go with a certificate and then associate. And that's how I climbed up because when you said four year college to me, that was just too overwhelming. But when you talk to them about bits and pieces of education, some people, children may take it easier and accept this. I like it. Rhonda, I see you said technology is a barrier. Um, I mean, obviously they can access technology like at their public library or in normal times. I don't know about COVID times or something like that, but is there another suggestion that you have for how to, um, how we can help people navigate that barrier? I was gonna type it, but I might as well just say it. <laughs> um, well, we're trying to close the gap right now. And the technology that we offer is not just for those suffering from mental illness, it's for families, it's for students, it's for those who need um, to connect with services, applications, those kinds of things. So that's one way. There's also other community partners, like we're partnered with the city of Louisville, the innovations department, and we're working to partner with another community organization who's trying to do the same work we are or similar and giving free internet out. And we've partnered with um, Spectrum and AT&T to offer low income or low cost Wi-Fi to families who are in the 135 percentile. So we're trying to close the gap, but you're always gonna have that gap. So letting them know that there's resources out there to those barriers, I think is the beginning of solving that problem. Thanks Rhonda. And Olivia, will there be any, could, could any students potentially fill out a form, actually write on a form and send it to you or? Oh, they perform. Uh -huh. I actually, um, I haven't heard anybody talk about it, but I can ask if that's something that we could, you know, potentially leave some paper copies um, at some high traffic locations. 
Yeah, I think that, yes, yes. And so, yeah, the Humana's uh, JCPS 360 or just, yeah, ha high traffic areas, the, you know, the health centers, the, um, um, you know, different locations where we, you know, people have mentioned before might help. Oh, I think the cabinet for children, family and children, I think that'll be an awesome opportunity. I just received my approval to start a nonprofit for helping youth that's aging out of foster care. Well, all of them don't want to go to college, but I think having a cabinet with this information would help as well. It allows them to give youth opportunities. May I say something? Absolutely. Uh, I know in, in these uh, meetings we have and meetings from last year and everything, we come up with excellent ideas on communication, but I don't think we are fully using them because I still hear from parents, well, what's going on? The information isn't getting to all of our parents that needs to be. Now, we're not going to get it to every parent in JCPS. That's, that's a given. But I still hear more parents from Blue Lick and from um, uh, Knight that they are not getting information. Maybe it's because they don't have a computer or they don't know how to work one. And everybody knows you send papers home, parents don't really look at them. The majority of them don't. So I, I, I think we need to, what I'm saying is I don't visually see us acting on some of the things that we're doing. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And I think that's definitely why we exist. And that's great feedback, Joe. And to me, that that bring, that speaks to why it's so important that we share it with our personal networks and we take it to the families that we know. So if it's like, oh, you didn't know about that? Okay, let me share that with you. Or, um, and that's one reason why I want community partners part of the part of the table, um, babysitters, child care facilities. You know, we know that we can't just send it out on an email. We can't just put it, you know, on a website and think everybody's going to get it. That's just not going to be the case. We have to put it out there in a lot of different ways. So that is great, uh, great feedback, Joe. And it definitely speaks to why we have to keep sharing that information. Would it be possible to, for the schools to work with your family resource uh, person and have a round table with the community? Uh, like you said, babysitters, everybody in um, the different areas and maybe uh, uh, with that school and have uh, like monthly meetings or something and let the community have more input, which will spread to the uh, parents and to the students. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's actually what we recommend um, at schools is definitely having those, um, having those meetings with your community partners and, and bringing them together to talk about how can we get this information out. So yeah, so it looks like Joe, you might be wanting to get with um with our girl Beth, right? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> right. I sure will. She's a sweetie, I tell you. Sweetie. All right, good feedback, good feedback. And then also, yes, Rhonda, right, definitely working with SBDM and you know, working with different organizations. What I'm finding too, I will share that really the families that we're really trying to get to, a lot of them will never probably make it to a SBDM meeting or may not make it to a PTA meeting, they're probably not gonna be that connected. Um, so I do think right now, I'm always challenging, how do we tap into families wherever they are? Like wherever they are. First of all, we gotta find out where they are. Um, where do we know our families go? And then how do we go to them? So Olivia, we hope this has been 
helpful information for you. And hopefully we are thinking about how can we share this information um, with Olivia as well. Olivia, any parting thoughts that you are, or things that you want to share with the group? Um, just our contact information. Let me move this out of the way. Um, this is an email address for each of our um, student success coordinators. You can reach out to any of us if you don't know who to reach out to or you feel like you just want to be directed straight to the right person. We also have a general scholarship email address. It's scholarship at evolve502.org. Um, so feel free to email that as well if that is um, more in your comfort zone. Or you can just reach out to me and I will connect you with whoever you need um, based on which schools you're connected to. Um, but I hopefully will hear from many of you soon <laughs> so that we can help support you and your family um, in the college search process. Thank you very much, Olivia, for the information. That's that's good to know. Uh, uh, even though I'm in elementary, but my husband is assistant football coach. So, you know, I can let him know some things because coaches are a good resource, too. Absolutely. Are. They are. Yeah. They are. Yes. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you so much, Olivia. And Olivia, I think will be here with us. So if you want to chat or you have any questions um, for Olivia, please feel free to put them in the chat. You have Olivia's information. Here's what I'm hoping is that there's a ripple effect that from this group, there's a ripple effect with you share it with someone, then they share it with someone, then they share it and it keeps going. I will be here if I turn off my camera, it's only because I have a screaming baby in the background, so. <laughs> All right, thank you. And Crystal, I, this was announced two days ago, so I just wanted to pop it in, um, but this is a new scholarship that was announced from the state of Kentucky through the Kentucky Lottery Funds. So I wanted to make sure that everybody knew about that. There's the website, there's a phone number, and this is open to any Kentucky resident. So, um, you know, some of the parents of the kids that we work with may be interested in this. So help spread the word or new, new uh, high school graduates from last spring whose hopes were maybe dashed because what they were interested in disappeared because of COVID. This is a way for them to refocus and uh, get scholarship money. All you need to do is have a high school diploma or be currently working on your GED. And you can earn up to 60 credit hours tuition free. There's over 350 course options available and you can earn a certification in as little as four months. And these are the providers that are working with this program. So you can see it's quite diverse. Um, so again, we just wanted to make sure you had this information and help us spread the word. So when you go to their website, you can see it's very easy, just like the Evolve 502, to hop in, see what kind of credentials are being offered at what institutions to get that certification or that two-year degree. So this is in, a, in, a, in addition to the Evolve 502 scholarship opportunity. So there's lots to motivate our kids and our young adults about. So help us spread the word. All right, I'll turn it back over to you, Crystal. Um, talk about report cards. All right, so this is really just giving some information on where you can find um, a parent portal. So we know that our grading period, first of all, you know, as we're working at home, some of us don't even know like, okay, when is the grading period ending? It's very different. So this is just giving us some dates on when the grading periods are ending and then just some information on parent portal. The big, the big thing that, you know, if you're connected with any family members or if you have anyone that you know, if they are not already on Parent Portal, please encourage them to make sure that they are on Parent Portal. If they, if their email address is not updated in Infinite Campus, their school secretary can do it. And if their school secretary won't do it, I will do it. I'm finishing up my registrar's training just so I can make sure that families have 
updated um, email addresses in Infinity Campus. So all you need to do first is make sure you have an updated uh, web um, email address in Infinity Campus and make sure that you have Parent Portal. I recommend that you have it on your phone so you get notifications. You know, um, they drive me crazy sometimes, but I'm glad I know exactly when something comes in so I don't have to wait um, weeks to say, wait a minute, I didn't know that, you know, this grade was this. So please make sure that if you connect, if you talk to any parent, ask them, do you, are you on Parent Portal? Do you check grades on Parent Portal? And if they don't, please encourage them to get on Parent Portal. Crystal, mm -hmm. uh, I know a lot of people says NTI is not working, kids need to be back in school. Well, I have to disagree. Uh, I think uh, with my three grandchildren, um, they, uh, myself and my son are updated if the grades fall. Uh, they get a progress report. Uh, the teachers uh, give them sometimes a little extra time or extra work uh, that they understand. And I've listened to some of their classes and I'm telling you, it does work uh, with what we have to do because of this COVID. Uh, Yes, everybody wants the kids back in school one-on-one, -on -one, but that's not possible right now. Mm -hmm. But I think JCPS is doing a fantastic job. And mostly the staff uh, of teaching these kids things and uh, answering their questions if they have one. Uh, when they turn in their work, they can... Uh, uh, put in a comment if they don't understand something. So I think it's, I think it's working myself. Now, uh, nothing works 100%, but I would give this a 90%. Whoa, well, thank, that's awesome, Joe, that you've had that experience. And I will share too, that my experience working in the district, I've always advocated for everyone else's kid and family. And there have been many times where I was like, did my son turn in his homework? And I felt horrible, right? And I will tell you this year for me, I've been able to see, at least I can see what the assignments look like. I can give feedback to my son about the assignments. Um, and I'm way, I, this don't tell anyone you all, but this is the first year I've actually had parent portal on my phone too. So don't tell anybody, but yeah. So, <laughs> So I have Parent Portal on my phone. I made sure my husband has Parent Portal on his phone. Um, I also know my son's login for Google Classroom. So I will log into his Google Classroom to see what his assignments are. So these are things that honestly, the first grading period for us was rough. Um, I try to let my son just go for it on his own and see how he did. And I realized that you know, I had he needed that support. And I do recognize that everyone doesn't have that support. So I recognize that that was definitely, um, I had, there was a privilege there that we were, that I'm able to support him. But I will say that the information, the open door of information is definitely helpful to know what kids are learning, to have more of a, a, um, an eye in the classroom has been really, really helpful. Thanks for I'll sharing. tell you, I tell you something else, uh, the math. I mean, my husband's a retired school teacher and he can't even do the math because they want it done a different way. But with us not being able to help them, they can ask their teacher and uh, the teacher explains more, gives them examples. And I can tell you that... Uh, my two grandchildren that are in middle school, it does work. Uh, when parents don't know something, uh, the teacher will work with the student until they get it. Yep, yep. And how awesome is it too that we can kind of look at some stuff too so we can help better help them. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. 
Definitely. Thank you, Joe. And then uh, Dominique, thanks for your comment too. Um, you know, they're all using technology more and it definitely technology I see as an opportunity again for us to open the door. We can see more about like what's happening in the instruction. And then too, we hope that um, most classes will be recording the lessons so like if your child can't see the lesson for any reason or you need to look at it to kind of get some feedback or some background information, you can do that. Yeah. And so I know uh -huh. I know on the ECE side, um, some of my families, they have um, indicated, especially those kids that might get triggered a lot of their behaviors in a typical classroom, they're doing much better with NTI. And um, they don't have those extra stimuli to keep them um, agitated. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I actually read, um, I've been reading some articles on that, especially if, you know, kids were having, like you said, if they were in an environment what that, you know, there were a lot of distractions, you know, at least they had, they were, they're able to limit those distractions. Thanks for sharing that. That was Lisa, right? Awesome. So if you have any questions about grading, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, or if you're even just any comments about like what it what's working or not working for you. We're a community, we're here to help. So if you know something's not working and you need some support, um, maybe we can re help you with reaching out with schools or even just thinking about some things we can suggest, definitely let us know. All right, Cindy, I thought you were gonna be talking with me a little bit more, <laughs> just navigating through. All right, so we have a poll that we're putting up. Um, it's our hot topics poll. So we hopefully you see it right now and just take a moment if you can. And we wanna know, what do you wanna know more about just this year? This, the, what we, when we come together, this is to give you information. So do you want more information on student assignment? Um, that may be just how to choose a school like what, what schools or the, the student assignment plan, what that's gonna look like um, next year. And by the way, I'm gonna share this more at the end, but on November the 17th, we're looking for families that are in the, that reside in the West End, whose kids are in middle school or high school and they're at an East End school. They wanna get your feedback on what your experience has been like and possibly have you ask some questions at our student assignment form. So just a side note for that, but if you want more information in the future about student assignment equity, how our schools were you know, responding to equity and to the equity, the, the equity issues that we've seen in our district for a long time. Um, if you want more information about that, if you want information about backpack of success, special education, tutors. So you can read the list right there but please choose which one that you wanna know more about. You can choose more than one. Um, and you know, we just want that feedback so that we can help plan what meetings will be of best, you know, of help to you. So hopefully you're putting your options in there. Yeah, we've got 10 of 21 responses so far. So waiting a few more minutes here. If you wanna put your option in the chat, um, we can include that if we, if we have trouble accessing the poll. Yeah, Elena, that it's, hopefully I'm saying it right, Elena or Lena. Elena, I hope that I agree. I think, I hope some of the things like the videos, um, knowing the assignments, that that stays after NTI as well, because that has been really, really helpful um, to have those little videos on how to do things, how to help at home, um, and then knowing just how do I know real time how my kid is doing um, on their classwork. And then we're sending the poll again. I don't know, Dina, can I close? If I end it. It's okay, it's all right. I can say, I'll say them if you wanna put them in the chat. Student assignment, equity, Backpack for Success, Special Education, Tutors, Internet Safety, Curriculum and Diversity, 
district strategic planning. All right, so our results are going to pop up in a second. If you haven't put it in yet, go ahead and make your decision. Okay. And speaking of tutors too, Chantel, thanks for putting that in there. I we are we are sharing um, the information. Hopefully, you got it on yesterday's communication um, update. But we have FEV tutoring. FEV tutoring is going to be an online kind of a chat feature. It's really awesome. Like, so basically, um, your students will be able to receive free tutoring um, third through 12th grade um, on their assignments, or they could even get help with like college entrance or help with ACT or, you know, a lot of different things. So I'm going to share more information about that option as well. So it looks like many of us wanted information about student assignment. Um, it looks like the a curriculum and then district strategic planning. Um, Cindy, can you give more um, background on the district strategic strategic planning? Well, actually, no, I know that at the end of last year, they asked for people that wanted to participate, but I have not seen any follow up on that yet. Um, okay, so, so well, if there's a high interest, which it looks like there is, we'll mm -hmm. follow up on that. Okay, and then even for district strategic planning, when we off like so next Tuesday again, and we'll share more information, but next Tuesday, we are looking for some people to participate that will help with district strategic planning as well. But I do think it is important that you all hear from people who are making decisions about, you know, so a lot of different things that are happening in curriculum and um, what's happening with our schools that you are able to talk to different leaders in our district. So thanks for that feedback um, on that. All right, I'm gonna, we're gonna click onto the next slide. All right, so a couple of announcements we want you to have. The CARE hotline is back, right? And I'm so excited about that. Um, that is an option for, please share this as much as you can. You know, you never know, like if somebody's helping with homework or they're trying to navigate through something or they don't have a device or their kid is having, you know, is having mental, um, just issues with mental health or, you know, motivation or whatever it is. This care hotline is open for um, you to be able to get what resources you need in the district. So please share that out. It's open each from Monday through Thursday from three to seven. So please share, share, share that that line is available. Also, the JCPS 360 um, for those just joining us, you can actually go to um, at the Humana Waterside building there is a site where you can actually go and get one-on-one -on -one support. And so you'll see all the different services and ways you can get support there. Uh, but it's just a good opportunity. Some, some of us, you know, we need that face-to-face -face opportunity. We may need somebody just to help walk us through um, how to get on this device or how to get our physicals or we need social support. So whatever it is, may, you can make a, an appointment at the link that you see. And I think Melissa or someone maybe have just shared that link in the chat too. All right. So this is again, the information for parent voice, right? So for parent voice, we really need someone who is in the West, who lives in West Louisville, um, Russell, Shiny, Parkland, California, and their student attends um, a JCPS school that is outside that area. So we really want um, participation because we're going to be asking community, we're going to be asking board members and giving our feedback on what we think this plan should look like. So again, the student assignment plan is going to be changing and it should involve our feedback. So if you know a parent or if you know someone that that applies to, please have them contact me or contact me and I'll reach out to them. You can email me put it in the chat. Tell me, Crystal, I think this person will be great. Here's their phone number. I can follow up with them or send it to Cindy. We'll follow up with them. So again, 
We have about one person that has agreed so far, and we really want at least a couple more parents um, that can ask some questions or just give their perspective about what what this what it might look like for them. All right. So we're moving along with updates. Are we still, we're still here, right? We're still together. All right. So our next, and stay with me because my favorite part of the meeting is coming up. So, but just some updates. We won't have a meeting in December. So Merry Christmas. <laughs> By the time we come back together with PAC, it'll be 2021. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so we're going to make it. So our next meeting is going to be in January. Uh, but that does not mean that you won't hear from us. And in, in the meantime, if you need any support or if you need to connect or you might be meeting with your school teams, we are just a email call away or just a whatever away. So anyhow, just make sure you put this on your calendar for our next meeting. Invite some people that maybe didn't know about this meeting. Bring them with you next time. This is open to whoever wants to participate. And so um, in the meantime, You'll also receive information about Evolve 502. You'll get a link um, to the parent portal video and you'll get a, the follow-up date for our PAC meeting. All right, so best part. Okay, so not this is not it yet, but we do want your, I do love this. We want your feedback. So in the chat is, your, is a feedback form um, that we just wanna get your, you know, your ideas on like, how did the meeting go? We do appreciate feedback. We read feedback, we love feedback. So please make sure that you give us our feedback. Thank you, Melissa, for putting that in the chat. So Krista, you're just gonna go past Thanksgiving and not say happy Thanksgiving. You're just gonna oh, act like it doesn't that? exist. Did I do that? I think I was looking at- Yeah, you did. You said, you said Merry Christmas, no happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, so happy Thanksgiving too. But honestly, okay, so here's the thing. You know, I saw December and I'm not gonna lie. I really thought, man, we're not gonna be able to get together for my birthday. <laughs> but I know Thanksgiving, oh, I want some food, the food. Yes, okay, I'm sorry, my bad. All right, so put that in the feedback. Crystal, don't skip Thanksgiving in the future. <laughs> All right, so my favorite part is coming up. All right, so this is it. This is what I, what I really, our meeting on Monday, I really love this part um, because we had some parents that were able to just share some words of encouragement. So every time we come together, again, it's about building community. It's about sharing resources. It's about um, us sharing our expertise. But one thing that's very important is for us to encourage each other. So I am opening it up to us to share encouragement with the group. Um, I want you just to be thinking about what is something <laughs> ring. I thought that was like your, you've got this music. We are ready. Oh crap, did I break up? Okay. Um, so it was, there's something that, you know, someone shared with you that was important. Okay, am I, am I back? You're back. I'm back, okay, I'm sorry. All right, so I think my ring messed me up. But um, so anyways, we're opening it up right now. So if you want to share some words of encouragement, please feel free. You can unmute yourself and feel free to share. Well, I would like to share that I appreciate uh, you, Crystal, and Cindy for putting together uh, this PAC program because it is a lot of good information that we as parents and uh, other people that are on here that can take back to our schools and to our students and to our parents. Parents are so important in this uh, and a lot of times in a roundabout way, we need to educate our parents to let them know uh, what things are going on, how we're doing this, 
and different parents are different. So we have to talk to them in a different tone or language that they understand. So I appreciate you and Cindy and everybody that's on here today. Thank you, John. we appreciate you. I have something I would like to share to all the parents who's working with their kiddos on NTI. I know sometimes it could be stressful, but you are amazing. We are amazing and you're doing amazing work. Continue to work with the kiddos because they're going to need it. I'll take a turn if it's okay. Yes. <laughs> I just want to say the, the common phrase that we all have been saying lately is you are not alone. And you can take that as you need it because it can be in mental health. It could be in any struggle in your life. All roads lead back to mental health. So if you're struggling with health issues, know you need to keep your mental health in check as well. And if you're struggling with mental health, keep your health in check but you're not alone and there is support out there and people who care and reach out to someone. It doesn't matter who it is, someone you haven't talked to in a long time or someone you talk to every day that just doesn't realize you're struggling. Just reach out and let them know that you're struggling because you're not alone. I, I would like to share some words of gratitude for Jorge being here today to um, ensure that we are practicing language justice. So thank you, Jorge. Your job is so hard and you did amazing. Thank you. And if you all want to unmute and do real claps, but we need to get some noise to go out today. Woo! Woo! Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> what else? Any other encouragement? Oh